Oh, snap. There's hot gear. Merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura. Head on over. Merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Sattva. If you go to sattva.com slash YMH, you automatically get $225 off of your order. That's an incredible savings, incredible product. I'm a huge fan. You can get the Luxury Firm uh, Sattva flagship model. You can get the Lumen Leaf Memory Foam or the Solaire, which is I'm, I'm very excited to be trying soon. They're an incredible company. I'm a big fan. They don't just send you a mattress in a box like you're some animal. These guys have takeaway service, white glove service. They come, they set it up, and they take yours away. Highly recommend it. S-A-A-T-V-A, sattva.com slash Y-M-H, and start with $225 off of your order. Start the show. This is... Two bears, two bears, two bears, two bears, one cave. Speaking of hot and looking good, looking good. He's Bert Kreischer. I'm Tom Segura. But let's just put the pedal to the metal and go, 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 go. This is a perfect way to start off this show. Twelve years in the making. This is gonna be a fucking shit show. Everyone's gonna, it's gonna, maybe gonna hate us. A hundred percent. He just. Uh, Finishing this chapter of Minecraft. Hold on, give him a second. Look at these. L- look at these likes. Oh yeah, it's an interesting perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Seems what? like a fucking lot, right? Yes. <laughs> How's that that high? I have no idea. That's likes. Come uh, on. But no, it's views. Views like uh, whatever it is. It's, uh, it's not a million people. Why do you think it's so high? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know. I wish I would. I wish I had a marketing brain about me where I could go mention your Instagram. Wait a minute. You don't think you have a marketing brain? You're like Mr. Marketing. We started the show. I didn't say anything racist. (laughs) Uh, You were reading a pretty racist book. Oh, oh, is that how we started? Okay, I was out of it. Um, No, I I, yeah, I I, I said to someone the other day, I'm 96, 97 percent artist, three percent businessman, and they were like, I. But I don't think so. <laughs> and they're like, I think you mean alcoholic. <laughs> Dude, by the way, partied hard as fuck. On Friday. Hard as fuck. How, how much did you drink that day? A lot. Like? I had four big cocktails, and then, and I murdered one. I just pounded it. And like, it flooded me. It felt so good. I ended up listening to the Grateful Dead. I listened to Post Malone's whole Nirvana tribute. It was awesome. The girls were inside. They were in their room on on like FaceTime. Leanne was gone. I was just wasted by myself. I got in the pool. I opened a bottle of wine. I watched a movie on on Michael Hutchins from NXS. It was like the best. And then shut it down the next day. Shut it down. Didn't even fuck it. So you watched that movie drunk? Oh yeah. Where 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 did you see it on on Netflix? Or? On I think on Amazon maybe. I knew I'm a big fan of Michael Hutchins. You know he lost his sense of smell, and it and it ended up driving him crazy. No. Yeah, that's why when people are saying they're losing their sense of smell, when people say they're let's take it from the top, when people say they're losing their sense of smell or their sense of taste, it that's not Michael Hutchins. Oh, there we go. There we go. No, no, no. Go back to the goalie. I want to know. What movie you thought I watched Nadav on the Toronto Maple Leafs goalie? <laughs> no, I misspelled it. I misspelled it. It's Michael it. Hutchins. I no, kept yeah, saying it, it auto-corrected my misspelling to Hutchinson. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. That was a great conversation. Anyway, <laughs> um, Michael Hutchins uh, is lost his sense of smell and his sense of taste. Wait, when did he lose it, though? He got into a fight in, like, Bangkok, or in maybe not Bangkok, but he got into a fight. A cab driver pulled up on him, and he was like, hey, fuck you, and the cab driver knocked him out, and it, he had a severe head injury. This was later in his life, Re- Later in his life, and he was dating Helena Christensen. Pull up Helena Christensen. Do you remember Helena Christensen? Smoke show. Oh, I yes. don't want to fall in love. One of the most beautiful women ever yeah. in the world yeah my god she was a supermodel i was thinking about what if what if you just went through and fucked 
all the supermodels that are now aging yeah and would love love the attention because they're like oh i don't have it anymore you're saying you'd do them that favor <laughs> no I was actually thinking of a movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Writing a script about a guy who goes around and fucks supermodels. Aging supermodels. And he's like, mm, I thought you'd like that. Like 70, <laughs> like 70 years old. And they're like, you know, they could use like 45 year old dick. Yeah. So you're saying a 70 year old supermodel. Yeah. Type he, in 70 year old these, supermodel. These girls are like 50 right now. No. <laughs> yeah. Helena Christensen. She said 49 right there. It said. She's only 49. That's what it said. I thought. Oh, wow. That's way out of my league. You're saying like that lady. Like, yeah, like May Musk. Like, oh, wow. That lady's 83. Da you're, you're Daphne right. Selfie. Go to Daphne Selfie. Just type in Daphne Selfie. I'm sure it's self. Daphne Self. I wonder what she looked like uh, in the 50s. Hmm. Go back. Daphne Self. Young. Right, young. Oh, it's like, it's so old yeah. that you can't even tell if it's pretty because it was just. Like back when you couldn't tell what was pretty back yeah, then. Yeah, I don't like it. You're like, oh yeah. It's hard to. Wow, there's a certain time age where you can't see if it's pretty anymore. You're like, in yeah. the 40s, you're like, no, I get it. No, someone has to tell you that this was pretty then. <laughs> They're like, you don't understand. She back was, then, she was beautiful. This was a lot to us. <laughs> she was a nurse. She worked under Florence Nightingale. Yeah. Jeez. I'm so You're sorry. Like, That's We're... what it took to be a fucking supermodel. <laughs> she just had hair. <laughs> I mean, what is she wearing? Wait, it's all this clothes. It's too much clothes. You know we're gonna get fucking murdered for trashing her. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Liz Jones, type in fucking, type in uh, model, uh, supermodel. No, I guess I don't have supermodels, but model 1918. 1918. Let's see. <laughs> it's a gun. Those are guns. <laughs> the Beretta Model 1918. <laughs> do like do um models 1930s. You know. Yeah. Swimsuit models. Do that. Maybe we're like. Yeah. yeah. Swimsuit models 1930. Yeah. God, can you imagine the racist shit that came out of their there? There you go. Look at these dogs. No, nobody here. <laughs> Me. Go straight to my the wife could be a model back then. <laughs> then. Your wife would blow all these out of the water. I mean, look at this. Hold on. Wait, go go back to the fucking the Poconos. <laughs> Wait, enlarge that. That is not. Ugh. I mean, did they look at their faces before they that took is the picture? Not, not that is not attractive. I mean, no, it's like a fucking bus stop. Like, I don't know why they're. Oh my god! So when did women get attractive? This is like right before they went into the mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's it almost it almost feels like attractive happened at a moment way after this. Let's see if we can pinpoint what when year? women became attractive. <laughs> All right, okay. go decade so by decade. <laughs> 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 Okay. Zoom in on the. Can you zoom in on the color it's... one? Can you make it bigger? Let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, not the best. Not the greatest. I'm not. No, I'm not blown away. No. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't turn my head if I walked past it. You know. I mean, the I center one, like... I guess, is if she had attitude. But no women had attitude back then. They'd get no, beaten. Super docile. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anyone with any Whitney Cummins who speaks her mind is getting the shit kicked out. <laughs> uh, and there's no justice at all. <laughs> what we find attractive in a woman's personality now got them beat. <laughs> She's a real firecracker. Oh, I'll take care of that. <laughs> no, oh. and also you realize oh. that when the police came to those situations, they'd yell at her. Well, this is what you fucking get <laughs> for having a big mouth. Okay, this girl's kind of attractive in like a, hey, I'm going to be working at the beach for the summer kind of way. 1940s swimwear. Not my favorite. Look, man, it wasn't happening in the 40s, okay? Okay, let's go, let's let's go, go, let's go, go 50s. 50s. Let's go 50s. 50s. Maybe... They figured it out. Swimsuit model, 1950s. Oh. 
Wait, can you zoom in on any of like? Okay, zoom in okay. On yeah, I mean, she's she's cute. That girl's cute. Yeah, she's not bad. Go to the, go to the one before kicking in the air. You know. Oh, that's James Mansfield right there, can right? Oh, uh, I. It's just that the face. She's making a face. You can't. Yeah. Really. She looked like a hot executive, but not like a swimsuit model. Who's that? That's Jane Mansfield, I think. Right there? No, I don't know. I don't know, but she looks hot. She looks like an island girl. Yeah, she looks pretty cute. Scroll down. Go down. And show us a few more. Okay. Okay, now, do you know what this is? Ugh. Television showed up around here. So this is where... What is that smile? I don't know. Oh, I think I got... Yeah. Guys, I think I'm sitting on something. <laughs> Guys, I think I'm definitely sitting on a sea urchin. This is... See, this girl's parents told her she was way prettier than she is. You know what I mean? They kept, they kept telling her, you're gorgeous. and oh, let's, that Okay, big, let's, let's argue this. Yeah. I mean, we're going to probably need a woman's opinion in this. Yeah. But, okay. Okay, by the way, a little disclaimer here. Yeah. Uh, these are brand new thoughts, so they haven't been thought out. So I Dude, can't get in trouble for them. Those are all your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> women always shit. Like, like progressive women shit on the male standard that we've applied for beauty standards. Males apply to beauty standards yeah. that they shouldn't be held up to. Is, yeah, it yeah. Zoom po in. is it possible that this is simply before that male beauty standard? This is before notes. Well, this is should be the decade that it happened in. This right? is this one. The 50s. This, be, this one woman's beautiful. Is that Monroe? I can't even tell. Oh, is that a, Marilyn? So Marilyn Monroe might be the first attractive woman. Well, I don't know if she's... Like, no, no, like, like, and like what we, like. How about that? Hands on the hips there. Hands on the hips. Yeah. Scroll in. She's pretty. She's pretty and a little hippie. I like she's it. like a fucking accountant's daughter. All right, go to the, is there another one? You know, she's got dark sideburns, like hair grows down her cheek. Yeah. Oh. Yuck. Jesus. Do you it looks like she's smelling her armpit, like. No, I and think. that face too, man. Go to the fucking track if you're gonna look like that. Let's real quick. Let's get a palate cleanser. Let's get a palate cleanser and type in 1990s swimsuit model. Oh, it's gonna. Let's be just get a palate hopping. cleanser. Oh, oh, look at El McPherson. Fucking shitting me. And my dick just got hard. Like ju immediately, I re I go back to these pictures and they would my, my dad would get the swimsuit uh, edition at his office oh. and I'd show up at his office getting ready for baseball and I'd see it and I'd be like, ah, oh, I wonder if I could rub one out real quick before we go oh, to baseball. Yeah. God damn it. These girls. Were so wait, so this so is, are, is this t effectively what women are complaining about is this is the male standard. Well, we're, we're talking about the male standard right now. Are they complaining about the, the swimsuit model? The swimsuit like, issue? Yeah, like this, uh, like these are like unrealistic things, is what they. What I mean, say. these, these, most of these ladies are genetic anomalies, you know. I mean, that like, was that Tyra. Was that who was that last yeah, one? Yeah. Was that Tyra yeah. Banks? Tyra Banks is. I met her in person one time. She came. Yeah, they don't even look real, right? Like you meet them, you're like. She doesn't look real. Her and Heather Graham do not look like real human beings. Like so, they're so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so Ellen McPherson, I would be a toilet by the way person. the average just and like i, I say this because they're in our business but the average fucking female comedian is hotter than any woman in the 50s oh yeah i agree and i'm, I'm saying Look that because they're Berry. just comedians She's in her 50s. halle berry is perfect who's this 55 year old yeah who is that i don't know by the way I, gray hair is sexy as fuck you I like watched, i watched goop last night goop you Goop. watched that? Yeah, I watched it with, uh, what's her name? Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow's got gray roots. I find it hot. Really? Yeah, I like gray roots. She's like, letting the gray go? No, I think she just was being a little sloppy. Really? Yeah, I think her stylist wasn't paying much attention. Hmm. Type in Gwyneth Paltrow gray roots. Yeah, to gray roots. Yeah, to, to gray. To gray roots. Can you see them? No, it was in Goop. It was about, dude, by the way, Wait, it is got that a, me. Is that on Netflix too? Or Netflix. No? By the way, shout out to Gwyneth Paltrow. If you're watching this, G. Shout out to Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh -huh. My mouth is sloppy this morning. <laughs> this is, I got laid because of Gwyneth Paltrow. When? Last night. Why? Because they did a whole episode on orgasms. Hold on. Don't let me forget to t write men on there, okay? Um, uh -huh. The... There was a whole interview on uh, 
a whole segment on female orgasms mm -hmm. and it was talking about just about how different like it was just a fucking 30 minutes on orgasms and then leanne just hit the tv we were done watching she goes so what do you want to do i was like i don't know what do you want to do and she goes i say we go into the bedroom and i was like done son and i brought the fucking thunder did you really i sincerely did walk us through it uh i kissed her first that's which I, nice which i normally don't do i you just don't? usually put in work yeah. Like, let's get, because the kids are still asleep. We had to lock the door. Lately, Isla's been like coming in our room, just busting our room with fucking big ideas. Mm -hmm. Hey, I got an idea. Tomorrow, th this weekend, let's go to Hawaii. And, uh, yeah. and, but she wants this weekend, we're going to Hawaii in our backyard. We're going to turn our backyard into Hawaii and go to Hawaii. That's cool. Yeah, it's not that bad. But, um, so I go down south, I put in work. Uh, I go down south, I put in work? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like a carpet bagger. Yeah. I fucking go down south and I set up camp. I'm going to sell these fucking... Do you always eat ass, too? No, I never oh, eat ass. Okay. Leanne's not... It's not... Leanne's... You know, Leanne's gotten so fucking prudish. She has a statement she says all the time. Wrong girl. Wrong girl. And it wasn't that way originally. So every time you suggest something or try... She's like, wrong I go, girl. Uh, what, what did I suggest the other day? Um... Uh, I, I just said something... I said something so not... Like, let's go have sex in the garage. She's like, wrong girl. And I was like, what it used to, you used to do that. She's like, yeah, that's who I was, but I'm not that person. Things have changed. Wrong girl. She says wrong girl all the fucking time. You look good, and by, by the way. way you look I, good. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. When I got drunk the other mm -hmm. night, I'm sitting on the couch. We're watching Michael Hutchins. He's having crazy sex on the thing. They're talking about it. And I'm like, got have another pop, a little, a little sip, right? Mm -hmm. just, and then I just go, I'm tired of this wrong girl shit out of nowhere like i forgot how alcohol will start a conversation with you alcohol you'll be sitting on your recliner and alcohol will be like man you feel good right and i'm like yeah and he goes it's fucked up the way she talks to you though huh and you're like huh he's like dude she just says like wrong girl like you like you never fucked that chick before you fucked that chick that's who you married and i'm like yeah and he's like Wrong girl, my ass. She doesn't say that to us. And I go, she doesn't. And he's like, well, you better tell her. And I'm like, I fucking will. And then out of nowhere, you just go, I'm right here. What's up with this wrong girl I'm shit? I'm tired of this wrong girl shit. And what'd she say? She went, excuse me? <laughs> and I was like, I'm done with it. Like, don't, let's not do that anymore. I don't want to, I'm not old. I don't want to be old. Let's still fucking have fun. I want to have sex in the pool. Wrong girl. Wrong girl. Wrong girl. I said, we've done it before. And she goes, yeah. And I didn't like it. Wrong girl. She does. She says wrong girl. So much to me just to shut it down. Wrong girl. Do you have a vasectomy? No. Are you going to get one? Uh, didn't we say we were going to get them together? Do you want to still? Sure. Wrong guy. <laughs> That's what I'm going to start saying. I want to get one uh, <coughs> like one, once you can do elective stuff again. You know? Like this summer. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you can't do it. I haven't. By the way, I haven't, I haven't had a cardiologist appointment I missed. And my tooth is starting to hurt again. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go for a while, but then maybe we'll do it all the same week. Um, I'm not, I'm not even worried about my cardiologist. I'm in such fucking better shape than I was when I scheduled that appointment. Actually, I was going to say, you look good because you're, you've thinned out. I've thinned out. Yeah, I don't know how much I've lost, but I'm not, not going to weigh myself. like no. it Because it just fucks with my head. Yeah. I want to enjoy myself. So I'm running like crazy. Cheers. I'm running like crazy. Um, my drink. Here's my new theory. Don't let me forget men. I am tired of people making me. I'm tired of the bullshit that AA comes up with, where you got to count your your sober days in a row. I think that's bullshit. I think that's that that's what their whole goal is. It's stupid though because it do, it sets you up for failure. You can't have a good time if you do if you have to do all your sober days consecutively. I'm being like I'm being serious. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, they yeah, they mark like months and then years. You know what I mean? Forty five days right now. Forty five days. What? I have been sober for forty five days. There, there is no. Sober. But, that, but I want to change that. Like I want to change it to. You drank three days ago. Yeah, I know. But I I want to change it to. I want to change it to. I want it to be different. It's like no one does a diet and goes, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm strict on my diet. And you go, well, you're a fucking lunatic then. Well, some people do do that. And they're fucking lunatics. 
Right. Right. Like when you meet someone that's like, yeah, I've been vegan for 15 years. You're like, okay. Yeah. You don't party at all. Like no bacon. Like, ugh. you're like, eh, I might not like you. Like, I don't think I'm gonna get along <laughs> with you. You know what right. I mean? So what if, what if you meet somebody and they're like, I've been sober for, you know, 10 years, 10 years. And I go, wow, well, you must be out really out of control. That's what you hear yeah, I, in my head. I hear it. I go, you couldn't just have a drink. And no, they, they, go, could, they can't. And they go, no, no, no. And then, no, next thing you know, I'm sucking dick behind a dumpster. And you're like, just one drink and you suck dick behind dumpsters. Well, well then, and then it can, I'm, by the way, we're talking this through and I know I've, I posted something about sobriety the other day on my Instagram and dude, so sober people got really upset, like really upset. What did you post? Um, I said something about the fact that I, I had drank, I I'd only drank in 41 days. I'd only drank once. So I said, I drank 40. I, I, I haven't drank 40 of the last 41 days. And everyone's like, bro, you drank on Rogan. That's fucking bullshit. Just so you know, that upsets us sober people. Don't talk like that. And I was like, Hey, go fuck yourself. Don't talk to me like I'll talk. I'll talk any way I fucking want to. Right. Okay. Yeah. So like, I, like I understand that you have an issue with alcohol. I understand you also see that I do because everything that you see is gonna come out with those glasses on. Everything's fucking all or nothing. I I just go. I wish that you could just find a new way to go. Like, yeah, I I don't party for like a month, but I'll have a night off. Like like I wish there was a way to uh, have that be an accomplishment. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it can be to like to yourself, you know. I guess. I guess my point is, I'm. I'm like most anyone in like the sober community. Yeah, is not going to see your approach or style to this as like, hey, credit given, because they don't view it. That doesn't work for them like that. Yeah, they don't and, go, and like, it's the oh, same you... people that get really upset. I got a lot of people talk shit to me about sober October. I'm looking at your. Okay, I wrote, okay, spent 40 of the last 41 days stone sober, right? Yeah. So 41 days was when I had my first drink. And average under, and by the way, this is also crazy. My deep sleep is when I drank was like an hour 37. And when you're sober? It's barely fucking three minutes. All right, so people wrote to you, uh, alcohol dependency, liver is fucked. Have you tried? It's like, first of all, well, there's no in. gray area. No one, uh, by the way, this is the dumbest thing in the world to ever... This is where you really isolate those people with IQs from 70 to 75. Yeah. Like that you really want to find those people are in this comment thread. Okay. It's people that have never lived a life. Your body is used, your body is used to alcohol. Give it more time to adjust. Okay. Okay. Jason Robinson. Yeah. Jason Robinson. It's been 41 days. Just so you know, you haven't read anything. Jason Robinson. And that you're after 21 days, your body is it's, it's out of your system. Uh -huh. That's, that's all the research I've done. It doesn't take 41 days to get alcohol out of your system. Right. Actually, after five days, it's out of your system. Right. Yeah. By the way, I didn't research that. I just right. said that out loud. But like you look at these and then... It says your body's going through withdrawal. That's why... You're... See, yeah. Reed Hicks. Once again, ta Iman. 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 Nadav. <laughs> Nadav. Type in yes. uh, <laughs> how long it takes for alcohol to get out of your system. Yeah, we'll check back with you in 30 minutes, okay? Yeah. But my point is, like, it's amazing how loaded... Like, when we do Sober October, I get a lot of people really upset that that you do Sober October because they go, guys, this isn't a game. This is, a you know, like... Sobriety for a lot of people is very cherished. Like, it's like a... Not one hour, Nadav. I'm typing in... So apparently it, took, it takes one hour to get alcohol out of your system. I don't know. Okay, look at the people also ask. Does it say it in there maybe? Don't worry about it. I think no? this is a paw. Uh, All right, how long does alcohol stay in your system? That The American Addiction Centers. Yeah, that one. Does it give us... Um, it's not. It's Blood up to six hours, 24. I mean, hair, 90 days. In your hair? In your hair. That's what it says. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. I think that... I think it's it, anyway. My point is, I I you I read some of those comments and I was like, all right, this is fucking ridiculous. And then you go, I I don't like. I've really enjoyed not drinking. Like I've enjoyed it a lot. And I go, cool man. I, I like and I love building up days. Like it's cool to look at you. And go wow. I, out of the last forty, what did I say forty five. I haven't drank forty three days or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. And it's cool to do that. I, I get that. I get the accomplishment part. But I also like fucking cutting, getting off the reservation, having a fucking good time, and then showing back up the next day, like, hat in hand, like, so we're going to start this up again, huh? Like, yeah. I love that So you want to go, you like to do off on off on yeah i think it shows more strength to be able to start back up for one night and then bring it back like it like is that in the guidebook that they, i don't know but i want to start my new uh, my own aa right uh-huh. for me and my fucking people where we where it's like where i where we set up rules where we go it doesn't like drinking days don't count unless they're followed by another drinking day. If you go two day drinking days, then you got to start all over. You can't get a kid. This is going to be really popular with the sober community. (laughs) It's funny, man. I think I'm like one of the older people that drinks too. Like you start looking at when people quit drinking, people quit drinking like in their thirties. Like that's when people go, Oh, I'm done drinking. No one does it to my age unless you are like a career drunk. Like anyone that's made it, like Attell quit when he was like 35. Yeah. Like, no, I'm starting looking around at like the canaries in the mine. It's like me, Stanhope, and Ron White are the guys who are the only ones that really put back alcohol. And then you start going, like, wow, it's just three of us. Like, there's not a lot left. Geraldo died. Like, you start looking at everyone that's dead. You're like, holy shit. My point is, I want to new- set up my own AA. You should. Um, you familiar? Here, throw these on real quick. Are you familiar? Have you been following the norm? stuff at all i wish i could express to you the excitement i have in my heart yeah i don't know what you're about to talk to talk about i love norm mcdonald more than anything and i think i'm about to be super excited you're gonna be very excited so uh check this out it's not playing i think you i see of course it's not playing hello today we're gonna make French Canadian poutine fries. You what like are poutine fries? fries? Well, poutine fries Norm are McDonald's, basically huh? your no. fries, Norm Summerton. cheese, and this is a great the appetite. exact opposite of what I wanted. Really? I thought you said Norm McDonald. I just said Norm. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine. Have you, have you been to Canada? You've been to Canada. Yeah. Have you had poutine? Of course. Right. However, there's going to be a bit of a change to the recipe. Everybody likes to change the recipe up. These ones are going to have. Fries, cheese, pig shit, and pig piss. Ooh, it's going to be a treat. Okay, so let's get let's get things. Is it a dog bowl? Yeah, see. Give it, we'll pee on the fries first, eh? Yeah, see. What is on his dick? It's like a little chastity thing, nice, you know, like a punishment if it's dick gets and hard. Water squirting out on the, on the floor. No. So we just mix that around. And make sure all the fries are covered in pig piss. Oh, I love that he's Mr. Rogering this. Well, now it's time to. Why does this make you laugh? The main ingredient. Hey, some pig shit. <laughs> Wait, oh, look, did you see it? Did you see it? I saw it. I saw it. I saw it come out. You... <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. Now we take the cheese and we scoop it out here. Why are you laughing at this? Mix. Watch. Oh, no. You gotta take a look. Just, just a, a little bit. French Canadian <laughs> portion here, eh? Now we mix it up here. Oh, this is a feast. So we have to eat some of our big shit fries. So we just take right that was fucking dis- No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I can't look at that. That's fucking disgusting. Look. That, uh, no. Just a no, 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 no. Just a no. little bit. No, I can't. I can't. Press pause. I'm going to throw up. No. I'm good. I, just, I can't do it. He's eating it. He's fucking eating it. What is wrong with him? <clears throat> What is wrong with him? Like, what happens to a guy like that? <laughs> He's just doing what his dom said to do. <clears throat> his dom? Yeah. Is his dom a woman? Really, really hot woman? Yeah. He's got to be like the hottest woman in the world. What? <laughs> He's also, he'll give you a blowjob if you're in Calgary. He lives in Calgary? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, man. Hey, do we have anything else that we can watch? <laughs> 
That is the most. Can you disgusting. just watch for a no, second? No, no, uh, no, 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 no. No, because I'm I'm bothered that you're crying, laughing, <laughs> that you have tears coming out of your face, <laughs> that you're that happy that that isn't. A... He didn't even wipe. He just shits on it and then goes and sits back on the stool. Oh. How are you going to defend this to your children one day <laughs> when you're t- when you're long gone and they're in college and they're going, what kind of this stuff made dad laugh? And they're going to see this. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I just realized this is a catch rag I have in my pocket. A catch rag? Yeah. What's a catch rag? I don't hear, feel these little hard spots all over it. That's <laughs> This is fucking gross. All right, we got it. Let's. That's really cool. Let's let's put change the channel. He, you don't want to hear the review. No, 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 he no, said it tastes no, amazing. no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> I can't believe you like that. Like, I I don't like it. How I, did you find that? I threw up when I saw. How it. How did you find it? <laughs> what? How did you find it? I didn't find it. The, how did How did you first? Uh, someone emailed it to us. Yeah, you saw his tit cups. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the same guy. Everyone was like, "Man, he's taking the whole time." Wild. I kept wondering if I could do that. You can do it. I bet I could. But just give me a couple rubber bands. So uh, the, after we played his tit cups, we somebody sent that in. It's pretty funny though, right? Because it's poutine, poutine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How much to let him spend the rest of the quarantine with you guys? He's a really nice guy. Do you know him? No, I mean I've been DMing <clears throat> with him. But, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> what does he say in the DM? Hey Just, Tom, I'm like, oh, you like my videos? Yeah. Does someone like that want to, people to know that no. he does what he does? No. Well, he doesn't want to be like highly. He doesn't want to do interviews, but he's like, talk. You know, I don't mind you playing my videos, and it's I got a good laugh out of it and everything. Really? Yeah. He was nice. He was really nice. So what? What do you think happened to him? He started BDSM stuff at 15. At 15? Yeah. He's 50, he's 73 now. And so wait, at 15 he started doing, and he just, it just works for him? It's just been building and building and building, yeah. He loves it. Why, how, how can you love, I mean, I, I guess I go, the same way people look at me probably drinking at an airport at six in the morning going, how can you do that? I look at him and I go, how does that, I guess it just fills something that's empty in him? Is that what it is? Could be. It's just it's so bizarre. Like I, it's. I, I, <laughs> By the think, way, reminder for Bert, men. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pivot on that one. That's so fucking bizarre. You wouldn't do something like that? Nope. What's that say? Oh, this is an old Bert tweet. Oh yeah, that was a real brilliant idea playing that game. It must be nice to be an Orthodox Jew. Same clothes every day. Same friends since childhood. And what does it say? And all. And all the chicks look the same when they hit 40. <laughs> when is that from? I don't know. That's from December 29th, 2009. So oh, right it's around a New Christmas Year's tweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go through my timeline. And is that when you one. lived in? Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> We're around a lot of Hasidic Jewish people, yeah. Orthodox Jewish people. Okay, I guess we are. So I guess <clears throat> I guess this is one sided. I guess Tom's never said anything negative about anyone. <laughs> no, I definitely have. Oh, it's another one. This ended up being like a bit, right? Did yeah. it? I did a bit like this. Was Why it say Mr. Gall talk to black people like black person? Please tell me that carries over to Asians, Indians, and the deaf. But this is my tweet. I know. I'm saying I did a bit about Seagal and how he would like pander to whoever he was oh it was for me i just i i don't remember that but uh i remember uh it was big i would do it when i talked to um black people on television you did that yeah yeah i did it uh a Co- lot of a lot code of, speak no uh, is that what it's called yeah, i think so i think it's called code speak a lot of uh hosts will do that when they talk like you talk to an old black man uh leanne did it one time in a uh in a fucking, I wish I could get the girls from her. We were driving. And we had this like, this dude that was just like real, like, like, man, we we gonna be getting to the airport kind of kind of late. And he was driving us, and Leanne's like, me and the girls in the car, and Leanne goes, when we be getting to the airport? <laughs> and the girls and I looked at Leanne like, what? She's like, I don't know. I got caught off guard. I used to do it. A lot of hosts, TV hosts, will do it. 
when they talk to like an old black woman in the kitchen, they'd be like, so you just be bringing the love. And you'll be like, oh, by the way, I'm definitely guilty of it. You, you can see it. It's funny because you see it all over television. It's super common. They, but they, but you don't do it to Asian people. Like for whatever reasons, you don't find yourself going, oh, like and nodding. But it, the and that was the joke is you only do it to black people. You don't do it to Mexicans. Right. You don't do it to anyone. But for some reason, as a host, and I'm I'm only gonna out myself, but I will say that it is very common. You see it a lot. If you watch a lot of fucking. So if we pull up travel channel clips of you. You definitely fine, yeah, fine, fine, yeah, definitely. Uh, so what, in, what would you do? You're at a like you're at a theme park. You're talking to people, and then a, a black person walks up. You'd be like, "What's black up, people man?" Black people are the best, man. If I saw black people, I fucking light up because they give you a lot of energy on camera right away. You get off in a roller coaster. A lot of white people, you'd be like, "So what was the ride like?" And then they see the camera, and mm -hmm. immediately they go into corporate mode. They'd be like, it "Was that a lot of fun?" You know, um, and they'll do, white people will rephrase things they've seen on television. If you ever ever ask a white person about a bite of a sandwich. They're like, it's great. I get all the different textures. I get the crispiness of the bacon. I get the fluffiness of the bun. The cheese kind of just is all over the place. It's really great. All the flavors kind of come into one. You're like, yeah, because you're chewing it. That's how you get it all into one, you fuck face. And so, the, uh, trust me, it's fucking frustrating. And then if they're black? Uh, if, they're, if a black person just is very real. To this day, one of my favorite things to do is watch any food, travel, uh, DIY, anything. Any of those, Isla does it with, with Asians. No, with if you just watch a white host with black people, oh. every fucking time they code talk, every time you can't help it, man. And it's not, you know, I watched someone, I watched someone. I won't say who this is, but you, I think you can figure out who it is. Okay. Um, he was, <laughs> he was shucking oysters on an island with a black dude that might have been like ninety. It sounded like the girl from Airplane. Shaka won't want no help. Shaka don't get no help. Jive turkey. Like, he got so bad that I was like, I'm watching it going, please say I've never been this bad. And I've been worse. I've been worse. Yeah. It's a, it's a, you think you're connecting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I did something, you know what I did when I was, when I was a kid, I, I just, because I so loved hip hop. Yeah. I would just think that like, if somebody was black and older, like 30s for like an old i was like this is something that will relate and i'm talking about as a, a kid 11 12 yeah and my my dad is like such a honky that <laughs> i would just be like let me ha talk to this person because like you're a cracker you don't know anything about yeah so one time <laughs> they uh my parents hired i think these guys to paint like brooms in the house or something and these two black guys come over and I was like, um, you know, uh, trying to make them feel comfortable. And I was like, sorry about my white parents, you know, like <laughs> they were like, okay. Um, and then I go, sorry about the, uh, oppressors in the other room. Dude, but, you know, it took me, I never thought about this for years and it's it must have been like, <laughs> startling to them because <laughs> they're painting. And I was like, do you guys want to listen to music? And they were like, And I was like this, <laughs> this, this kid. Do you guys, want to, do you guys, you guys want to listen to some music? And they're like, sure. And I go, I go, I got it. <laughs> so I got my boombox, and I set it up, and I, I was like, oh, I got stuff you like. I'll, and they're like, okay. <laughs> and I just put on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're just painting, by the way. You're just, you're at a wall and you're like, well, I'm going to be doing this for hours. And I was like, here's some public enemy. Welcome to the Terra Dome. <laughs> so they're like, really nice casual song. 1985. <laughs> Get down. Yeah. And it was like, you know. And then Tom walked back in. Are you guys hungry? <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. Like, like Oh, we're good. We're good. We're well, good. the thing is, like, I insisted on like you got to listen to this album front to back, <laughs> and then loud. So my parents were like, "You hear what they're listening to?" I was like, "Oh, that's mine." <laughs> your parents, your parents thought they hired two painters to put in fucking public enemy to listen to music. 
Yeah, in their house, oh. so loud. Oh. It's all like Malcolm X shit, oh. and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you guys all agree? Yeah. And then like I, they left, and I was like, oh, I did that for you guys. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. By the way, I can do. I want to do an entire sketch on that. Like Tom comes in and he goes, I. My parents are white. I'm sorry they made you use tape paint brushes. Here's some spray paint paint cans, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys enjoy painting like this. <laughs> oh my God, that's fucking great. Men? Oh, I don't know. Hold on, I'm not done with this. That's fucking hilarious. I love oh. when I, because you know it's it's so funny. There's so many times where you misstep where you're trying to connect. Yeah. And and it and it's viewed as negative, but you're just trying to. Connect. You're just trying, yeah. And it's like. Oh. One of these guys was like 50 something. I mean, he was like, you could tell that he probably wanted to listen to something a oh. little more low key. And I was like, this is your music. Oh, <laughs> I'm 12 and this is what I know. Oh my God. That is so, what is it? Okay. In comedy, like that is, that's pure comedy because it is, you're stone faced. Like you're not, yeah, you're not I'm, trying to I'm, be I'm, funny. I'm, no, not at all. No, I was genuine. And I'm unaware of. The, so precious. I just, I'm just like, I'm like, this, you're black. This is your national anthem. You don't want to hear it, like. Oh, yeah. God, that makes me fucking laugh. It's ridiculous. This podcast is brought to you by Beachbody. What is Beachbody on demand? It comes as no surprise that while we're all stuck in our home, we need to work out. Avoid the complacency. It's more important now than ever to stay active and keep moving. Workout classes in the comfort of your own home with Beachbody On Demand. Beachbody On Demand is the number one streaming service, in my opinion, that gives you instant access to over 1,300 super effective workouts suited for anybody at any time. The secret to getting results is simply get started. This is the company behind P90X, Insanity, 21 Day Fix, and now check out some of their newest programs like Morning Meltdown 100, 80 day obsession and start every day strong. They have the best trainers, uh, Joel Freeman, Tony Horton, Jericho Matthews, and uh, my all time favorite, Autumn Calabrese. Um, they're a hundred percent effective workouts for all fitness levels. And like I said, you can do them from your home on your iPad, uh, from your TV, no train. If you don't have weights, they've got uh, workouts for you. They've got cardio. They've got yoga, even dance workouts. Short as 10 minutes, and they don't require extra 10 minute extra equipment. Like I said, anywhere from your phone, Roku, Apple TV, Chromecast, TV tablet, web-enabled TV, computer, you name it, best deals. And right now, you can try it for absolutely free. That is right. Absolutely free. Leanne did, by the way, Leanne did the beach body workout. Uh, 21 day fix lost like 15 pounds fucking super awesome uh i want you to try this service right now my listeners our listeners can get a special free trial membership when you text bears to 30 30 30 that's right text bears b-e-a-r-s to 30 30 30 you will get full access to the platform entirely for free all the workouts nutritional information and support totally for free just text bears to 30 30 30 Hey guys, you know, sometimes the perfect product and the perfect host find each other. And that's what's happening today. As Tushy is on board here at Two Bears, One Cave. Tushy is the, the attachable uh, washlet that helps spray shit off of your filthy ass. Um, with Tushy, you use 80% less toilet paper. So it's environmentally friendly. And of course, it is so much more hygienic. I mean, there's now that I'm on board with one, I can't tell you how disgusting it is to think of taking a dump without a tushy. It attaches right there to your toilet and it uses the water from the water tank. This is the same water you brush your teeth with, okay? It's not toilet water. It's the water that is filling up the toilet and entering your sink. It's amazing, nice pressure. You just let that thing run. I let it run for full cycles. And you can feel the turds coming off of your ass. It's absolutely incredible. It starts at just $79. What could be better? Go to hellotushy.com slash bears. Get 10% off your order. Once again, hellotushy.com slash bears and get 10% off your order. Stop using paper. Start hosing down your ass. 
This has been a giggly episode. I know. And I'm going to get a lot of fucking backlash. Oh, by the way, shout out to Dak Shepard. Yeah. Who sent me, yeah, Dak Shepard's, uh, I'm, sh- it's, I'm sure it's his podcast, People, sent me a shirt. Uh, and, and so I got to, did you see him pull the fucking pin out of his hand? No. By the way, now I'm a huge Dak Shepard fan all of a sudden. Zach Shepard? Z- Zach sent me the shirt and I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, man, I didn't shit on him, did I? I was like, I, I can't, I fucked his name up. I, I fuck everyone's name up. And so I, and so I Googled him and I started like looking up stuff he's done and checking out his podcast. Oh. And then now I get him and Kristen Bell are in my news feed on my Google news because I Googled them once. Now that's in my news feed. Oh. And so. I get everything on them. What's going on in the news with them? I'll tell you. Um, Dax gave a list of drugs that he hopes his daughter does and hopes his daughter doesn't do. Actually, pull that up. Let's see what drugs Dax okay. thinks his daughter should do and his daughter shouldn't do. Kristen Bell just got critiqued by her daughter on whether or not she was a good uh, stay-at-home mom teacher. And then Kristen Bell fired back with a, a touche. Uh, or maybe that was not it. Here, psychedelic drugs. Go, go up. Okay. Okay. Oh. I thought it was the first story. It's it it is right there. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know if I'd be comfortable. I would. I want my daughters never to do any drugs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't want them to do drugs. It, I I don't want. I I wonder if oh, it's... oh mushrooms. At some point, he wants them. Yeah. I don't think mushrooms. I mean, I if, okay. If you could go back before you read what he says, they should or shouldn't do. If you could go back and never have one drug experience and sit here today like Daniel Tosh or Dane Cook, never fucking with your brain's chemistry whatsoever. Yeah. I would argue that Daniel Tosh has never had coffee. I would think, I think he's had coffee. I don't think he has. I think I've had coffee with him. Okay, then I'm wrong about that. Dane has never had coffee. He hasn't? No, he's a big hot chocolate guy. Hot chocolate. No, I'm joking. Oh. I don't know. But I'm sure they've had coffee. <laughs> but it's so crazy to have a dude everywhere. Just made my hot chocolate and <laughs> this is how I start my day. All right. Would you go back and never do a drug and be where you are today? Or are you comfortable with where your brain is now? I mean, I'm, I am I am actually a proponent. I like the psychedelic stuff. For real? I'm saying like I'm a fan of, you know, going down that path. But I think and all the other stuff... The stimulants and the, the you know, the, the okay, opiates. Let's, let's I don't do, think that you need to do any of those. Okay. Um, list of drugs. Let's see the drugs that uh, um, Dax said. Yeah. Just Not like, cocaine or said. opiates. Stimulants and opiates. I tell you, those are the ones I'd be like, you got to try those once. Really? Dude, cocaine is fucking amazing. You would tell your daughters that? You, I mean, you're going to have to say, like, what are you, a fucking child? Like, yeah. Step up your fucking game. You're going to have to try Coke once. You're going to tell them to step up their game. Hold on one second. Let's be real. Like, like obviously, this is a like a make-believe world. I, I, I wouldn't want my daughter to ever get addicted to cocaine, but you're like, it's... I don't know, right? You've done cocaine. Never. Are you serious? I've never done it. And I've wanted to try it. It is awesome. It is like, it does, you know, it's like what you ever see a movie and you're like, God damn it. Tom Cruise is worth every fucking cent they pay him. Yeah. He is a great action star. That's him holding on to the side of the plane. Yeah. That's cocaine. But for real, you put, you do cocaine and you feel, I remember being, let's get I'm, some, I'm, I would love Do that. you know where to get some? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I actually could figure that out pretty easily. Let's do a couple bumps. Like we should do cocaine on the, didn't we talk about this once? Yeah. Do cocaine on the show just to, and just and just walk us through. By the way, yeah, I remember doing coke and feeling like we were in New Orleans at Mardi Gras, and I remember having a feeling during the day that I could rip this tree out of the earth. And it was a, it was like a freshly planted tree mm-hmm. that I was like, I definitely could rip that out of the earth. But I'm smart enough to know not to because I'll cause a stink. Everyone's gonna be like, "Who's the fuck's ripping trees out of the ground?" Yeah, it it is amazing. Well, the first time I did it, it went, it literally went. I did it on my, I just went, I'm sure I did my left nose first and it was frozen from this side over. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm talking like from this tooth over here, yeah. just frozen. And I remember going over to my buddy and going, I think I need one more bump to I, this side of my face is kind of fucking, I'm feeling it too much. I did the other nostril and then this side went numb and I went, I feel pretty fucking amazing. 
I mean, I went like a powerhouse all night. I barely drank. You, but you could How drink. much Coke did you do? Not that much. Just I've never been like, every time I've ever done it, it's just been a couple bumps. I did it on accident one time. How do you do a Coke on accident? So we were with my one of my buddies, and he had like the uh, the little bullet where you like load it, uh-huh. and then you just flip the thing around, and then you hit yeah. it. That's someone who's done Coke. I guarantee it. Yeah. Answer it. Answer it. All right, hold on. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, from uh, Honeydew, Ryan Sickler. Hey, Sickle Cell. Yes, sir. Hey, we're doing a podcast right now. Have you done Coke before? Cocaine? No. Well, technically, yes, but not really. What does that mean? Oh, that's interesting. I used to date a black chick that um, would smoke parliaments, and uh, they have a recessed filter, and she would scoop the Coke and then hit the bump out of the filter, then smoke her cigarette, and... Um, one time I took half a bump out of that fucking cigarette, which of course it's not going to do anything. And that's my extent of cocaine use. I oh. don't like to go up. Okay. How about like you were done like morphine or heroin? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I do heroin all the time. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've done morphine in hospitals. But I've I'm done morphine. Man. That's it. Bro. Yeah. That's it. Okay. God. You ever you ever do like dust or meth or anything like that? Yeah, I'm big on the Paul Chuck Paul, bro. <laughs> Paul Chuck Paul. <laughs> I heard you can really fight some like you fight like ten people when you're on that shit, I man. Fought seven cops. Seven yeah. Cops in <laughs> Paul Chuck Paul. <laughs> All right. Shit. Well, we're just going through some hardcore drug stuff right now. Uh, I've done ecstasy. I've done. That's the hardest. I mean, that's not even that hard. That's the hardest I've ever done is ecstasy, shrooms, and weed. That's my extent. I've never done acid. I told you my coke. I've never touched heroin, meth, speed, none of that shit. How what about the, marijuana? A little bit of marijuana. I told you I got yeah. a weed habit on top of my weed habit. If I did <laughs> drugs, Tom, I wouldn't have these teeth. I'm the Cal Ripken of good teeth. I've had two cavities in almost 50 years. Bro. That's pretty wild. Yeah. And they, and Me too, and I have the, the worst teeth in the years. world. Yeah. Uh, no, Bert, you do not have two cavities. I have two hey. cavities. I have them right now. I've never. My first cavity is this one. <laughs> you got 27 you cavities. Sure. What's up? Kreischer, my stepson and I go to Santa Monica College, and we're kicking 40 yarders on the reg, 37 to 40 yard field goals on the reg. If you want to come work out with us, come on down. I'm are, you, telling you. are you training him to be a kicker? I trained him to be a kicker. I told him if you want a college scholarship and you want to get into football and not be concussed and retarded when it's all said and done, <laughs> kick. <laughs> You know, good advice, good advice right? coach. <laughs> we, we got, we got the. I bought the real NFL placeholder. You know, the little thing the guys yeah. use by themselves and kick in the net. And we go out and we bang thirty-five to forty. Is he getting good? Santa Monica College. Is he getting yeah, good? Yeah, he can. He can hit them from forty. He can. I mean, look, we're not putting them at the top third of the fucking upright, but they're going straight through and over the bar. It well, that's counts. good, man. You guys got to just keep it keep counts. at it. Keep <laughs> How at old it. is he? 16 he's like 6'2 and 85 pounds and he's still hitting them. yeah he's a big kid tall kid um all right all right let me holler at you as soon as we're done here okay yeah i was just hitting you about lunch let okay me know. all right man all right later. um do you think that uh that we could do a show, show with dr drew where he kind of like almost like uh getting drug with high getting dug with high but we do me and you and sickle cell mm-hmm. do all the drugs, right? He's not going to sign off on this. Drew? No. And, but no, but Drew just administers them to us. So like he finds us a healthy amount of cocaine, and then we do it, and then we walk you through the experience. It's a great show for YouTube. Yeah, no, it's a cool show. I, I feel like Dr. Drew might be like, uh, I can't really be administering cocaine, a healthy amount of Would cocaine. Would you do a line of cocaine, like a very small? Yes, yes. And just go and be like, this is what I feel like. Yeah. And talk through it. Yeah. Yeah. I've been wanting to do that. Okay. Let's do it. So if I get... But I heard... He told me, because I was, I was talking about this idea with Drew. Oh, I don't want to go to jail if I get cocaine for you. No, no, you'll be fine. But I asked Drew about that, and he was like, you'd probably be fine with coke. He said you specifically w- might really lose yourself to meth, if you, if you, even on one time. Uh, I've already fucked around with speed. I'm fine. <laughs> Drew... This is, call, my prob- this, is my, this is my problem. This is my problem with no. Call. Drew's a fucking buzzkill. 
I don't even want to talk to him anymore. Every last time I talked, he's like, well, I mean, could have striations on his liver. It's like, dude, then why am I quitting drinking? A oh, fucking yeah. last person I want to talk to, 42 days sober. You're not. It's 42 days sober. Out of 45, 43? Come on. Damn it. One month, 14 days, 47 minutes. That's not... So, mm. yeah, I have 42 days sober. What? Out of 45, 40 or whatever. 45. 45 days? Yeah. Sober? No, that's how long I've been working on sobriety. And 42 of them worked. 43, 42, whatever. I don't know. I don't like there's some half days I don't count. I don't count certain things. Like what? I don't, I don't count uh I don't count NyQuil. Why? Cuz you NyQuil doesn't count. Why? Because it's just helped me go to bed. <laughs> Look, there's a lot of things I don't count. I don't want to get into fucking specifics. How much do you? How much Nyquil do you drink? Two pills. Okay. Yeah, I do two pills if I'm like. Do you ever pound the bottle like the liquid? No. Oh. No. I would love to though. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The reason I do two pills is that, as I swear to God, if I get the cup of Nyquil, I go to the top where it's spilling over. Yeah. Where I'm like holding it like this, like. I used to do that in uh, high school if I was sick. My mom would bring me the cup, like a little cup, and the bottle, and I would just take the bottle and just tip it back and drink it. And she's like, "Um, that is more than the cup." I do this when I take it. If this is the little cup, I go like this. Yeah. The um. No, what were we talking about before this, though? Men? No. Uh, mm. Doing trying drugs. Drugs for your children. Drugs. Oh, here's Drew. Ugh. Hey, man. I'm doing a podcast with Bert, and he is uh, he's sober. 42 day, 43 days sober. He's 43 days. Not in a row. Not in a row, out of 45 days sober. Uh. And I was like... Yeah, I don't think they actually, that's how they count sobriety. Is like, that's, not, that's not how you count it. That's why? Not, but why not, that's Drew? Not he it, he but... wants to know why he can't start a, a program where you just try to not drink two days in a row and you count it right, as right. sobriety. Be, because those dots will start to get closer and closer together. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Many have tried. Many have tried such deals. And he also said, well. if his liver has problems, then why? Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Drew, every time I talk to Drew, he makes me want to start drinking. Yeah. <laughs> Drew, maybe. That's it? Yeah, no, no. Uh, by the way, hold on. Give me a phone. Okay. Can I tell you something, Drew? Okay, Tom wants to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Tom and I were thinking we do a web series where we experiment with drugs. So we would yeah. try cocaine together. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just enough to feel it, and then kind of report back to the camera, to the YouTube community. You would administer the drugs, like you'd cut oh, a line I, for I, us. I, I can't, I cannot do that. Yeah, I, I told you. To Super line, easy yeah. to cut a line, I, Drew. You take a I credit card, you crush it up. Are you saying you don't know how to cut a line, or you won't cut a line? No, no I will not cut a line. I, I will not administer illicit drugs. We want you to shotgun not, weed in our mouths. Not, not, not unless we can get like a human resource, a, a human uh, research clearance. Uh, from a committee, an IRB committee. Yep. And uh, do formal research on you guys. Nadav, light hey, it up. Hey, a couple things for you. Shoot. Uh, there's, a, there's a supplement called DHM that might help your liver a little bit. Finally, there is, is something that's looking a little bit like it might be helpful. DHM, so get that. Okay? Yeah. All right. There's that, number one. Number two, um, Tom. Yeah. Can Tom hear me? I yeah. Can, do you know Josh Potter is a sex worker? Uh, yeah, I know that he's doing um, videos for people uh, with his shoulder hair, and I think he does foot stuff too. I, I almost threw up, but yeah. he's also he, he's also he's feathering it. He's feathering the body hair. Yeah, he is. He's feathering okay. it, and he's okay. um. He said, you know, he started he's starting to do uh, masturbation videos on camera too. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my yeah, god. yeah. Oh my God! You people have ruined me. Yeah. D H. Oh, oh wait, what's the liver supplement for? Yeah, Bert? I'm, I'm for a friend. D H M. D H M. And it's and it's uh it says hang on one second D H M. It's a hangover pill, right? 
Yeah, but it's also good for for a little bit for your liver. Uh, okay. Uh, By the way, Bert, tell him tell him I'm fucking doing great. He's with doing not he's drinking. doing great. You know, he um he drank Friday a lot, a lot, a lot, like a lot, a lot, like shocking. a bunch of shocking. uh vodka bottle of bottle. I'm I will break every fucking. I'm I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna start my own AA and it's gonna be sober day is not consecutive and it's gonna change the fucking world. There there, there is there is a group that used to be called Moderation Management. That had a very similar sort of approach, and they all shut. They all shut down because it ended up spiraling out of control, as it always does. Uh, you'd be better off for just forming your own religion. Why don't you just do that? There you go. He he actually likes that idea a lot. Okay, I figured. I figured. And okay. so Bert, he's Bert, Bert, Bertism. He um he really feels like there's something to, you know, lit bouts of sobriety mixed in with nights off and having fun. You know. I, I'd rather see him do that, right? I mean, yeah. That's better than not. Yeah. And that's his, that's been his management style all the way along. Yeah. And here we are. So good times. Yeah. <laughs> Drew, Drew, I think it says more about my sobriety that I can get, I can go yes. off the reservation for a day, party hard as fuck, go right back on the next day. Right. And that that's where, and now I'm not saying this is you, and we're going to speak in the abstract for a second. The binge alcoholic convinces themselves that they can control their use because that's how they approach it. But as time goes on, the binges get longer, the durations between the binges get shorter, and that's where it goes. Uh, I think he'd like to see a little data on that. <laughs> well, he's about to collect some. If I run, if I run into one of them, Drew, I'll tell them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, any, is there any, is there any uh, company that you support these DHM pills with? No, they're all kind of the same thing. It's all the same thing? So should I yeah, go with yeah. the Amazon choice of Ease Ultra yeah. High Strength? Yes, 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 you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Wait, Chris. now, uh, Drew, one uh, one last thing here. Uh, he did make the point that he thinks it shows, this is our, uh, a Burt quote here, weakness in those okay, hold on. who are I, by sober the way, I take for back this. Me, like a long time in a row, like 10 years in a row. He's like, I think it shows more strength to be able to take sobriety drink and then be sober again that that's actually the stronger sober person yeah that that's that's the person who's engaged in what we call white knuckling and yes if you're considering hanging on for dear life stronger than changing your life and getting involved in something that is uh sustainable uh i guess that's stronger there you go we'll see all right there you go. thank you uh thank you for all this dr drew talk, all right. talk to you soon <laughs> All right, all right, bye, bye, bye. By the way, I'm gonna have Drew talk at my funeral and have him just come up to the podium and go, "Told you so," and just walk off. <laughs> um, you know what the opposite of Drew is? Uh, who's the opposite of Drew? Joey Diaz. Yeah, let's just check in real with him. Let's check in with Joey Diaz. Let's see if way. he'll do the show with us. The oh. drug show. <clears throat> What's up, Tarzan? What are you doing? You're catching chickens on the street. Can you believe that they? everyone wrote? Hey, man. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast with uh, Bert, and I wanted to get your thought on something real quick. Would you um, Would you be able, would you want to do a video where we do little bits of drugs, like a little bit of cocaine, a little bit of dust, a little bit, and we just report on what the feelings are? This is like an idea Bert no. had. No. Why? I want to try something like that. I want to try yeah, that. You put a little coke on a chick's clit and you put a finger up her ass and suck the clit. They don't know what hit them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit you do when you're dirty, right, Lisa? That's, oh, is Lee there? 
He said, man, on the other side of the twitch, like a fucking mook the law. He's a light bulb. <laughs> but that's it. You don't want to do no drugs. No drugs and see how it feels. It feels like shit. Really? Bert's been sober for a while now. He's been sober for uh, 42 of 45 days. I know, so why does he want to fuck around? I don't know. I think he just wants to, he's well, looking for a little I want to prove my strength. Yeah, he wants to prove he that he's strong. Strength. Well, dose your wife. <laughs> dose your wife. If that's what you want some excitement. There you go. Dose the wife, pop 200 milligrams of Viagra, and pull a Cosby. Even he's getting out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to set a fucking mark and then let the old guy out to be flying? <sighs> let him sit in there, that fucking pudding eating cocksucker. <laughs> what do you think about the black guy that lit his eyeball with a firecracker? How good was that? <laughs> what? <laughs> See the video I sent you? The black guy who lit his eyeball up with a firecracker. <laughs> no, I missed that yeah. one. <laughs> oh my God! When did the you? S- best thing in the world. When did you send that? I'll send it right now to you. The black guy puts a firecracker in his eye and lights the fucking thing. Please send that. A, a video right now. We'll send it right now. All right, man. I love you. I love you. His, what do you think it's like? You know how you know how when you go to, to bed, to have his brain. Yeah, well, you know how when you go to bed and you're laying in bed and you're like, you're like, like you close your eyes, you're like, okay, I got a busy day tomorrow. I got to do a podcast. I got a Zoom. I got a conference call. Oh, shut the god. fuck! Why would he do this? Why oh, would he do this? My god! Wait, wait, make it big. Make it oh, big. Wait, why make would he it do big. This? this is not. Hold on. Put oh, your why put your headphones. Why would he do this? On. All right, for those listening, this guy is squinting hard with one eye. Oh, why would he do this? And he's this? got a really thin. Firecracker no, wedged. That's a, it's a, it's like a blackjack. Right, right. So I'm I'm trying to explain it to a listener though. Like it's wedged into the squint. You know, he's using either side of his eyelids to clasp this very thin firecracker. Okay, volumes up. What is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> Why would he do that? Oh my God! This is. You can hear Joey. That's Joey about that's to have Joey. a seizure. Wait, that's Joey laughing. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> yeah, that's Joey. This is horrible, man. Oh my God! And this guy's like, I hurt my eye. Telling the doctor. Jesus, that is not a cure for coronavirus, everybody. Wow. All right. That what that? Oh, let's see if it, does the one that he sent have. Does it have the sound? I like my new open-chested uh, look. I think this is my new look. I think I'm going to... What if I started doing stand-up like this? Huh. By the way, speak. <laughs> Joey's laugh. Yeah, it's good. I think it looks good. That looks really good. Is, you know, looks- is this going to be like... You'll have to... If you ever wear clothes again on stage, it'll have to be a slow you know, process. Yeah. So at first it would have to be like open shirts like this. Yeah. That's how you, cause you can't just go to putting clothes full. You know, that's why I started getting healthy is I didn't want to have open heart surgery and then not be able to do my shows without everyone going. That's the motivation. That's one of them. I have a few motivations like that. I've been running like crazy. Uh, I know. It's just, I just, I I don't know if I, I, like there's an emptiness to working out. Hmm. You know, like, like, because I, 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 I think to myself, like, what is the point? I'm never going to look like them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, I, and I'm trying to work out pretty hard, but like... It makes you feel good. It makes you healthier, stronger. I guess. It's good for you. It's probably a good stress relief at, at times, right? I feel better after I work out. Well, like, there I you feel go. good, but like, I don't know. It's just odd. It's an odd thing that you'd have to do that to feel better. So a lot of people don't, man, at all. So. How, what percentage of this country you think doesn't work out at all? Oh my! The God. reason I'm working out honestly is the, and not drinking is because of the coronavirus. So I'm not smoking cigars, not smoking weed, and not drinking. Honestly, a hundred percent because of the coronavirus. Really? Yeah, because I heard Joe's podcast. I mean, like, I, well, I, I'm all jokes aside right now. Heard Joe's podcast, and I heard him say lowered immune system, people who drink, people who smoke, people who don't sleep enough, and I was like, and don't work out. And I was like, I'm all of those. Well, what they're finding actually is what's killing people a lot of times is your immune system going into overdrive. So like an overactive immune system is actually what ends up killing some people. Your, your immune system reacts in such a big way 
to this virus that it ends up killing yourself. So how do you lower your immune? Like, how do you... Mm, that's like something we don't really have figured out, you know? So that's what... Cause yeah, because I say everything starts attacking your body organs, your immune system. Your immune system goes crazy. How crazy is it that, like, this country is really going... The majority of this country is like, we're done. Well, I I do feel like right now, like this week, uh, you know, seems to be a better week. You know, newer cases are down. Like that. that I don't. Curve, I, all I get is bad news. I've never gotten one good bit of good news. No, if you start looking at the data, it looks like like new cases are. I mean, it's all gonna. Everything's gonna change when the testing goes up. But like hospitalizations have been trending down. Really? Uh, yeah. L.A. had a really good at least couple of couple of days a week this past week's been good so then here's the question would you go and do a comedy club say in a month just but here's the thing you have to what's the what does it look like in a month so say say zero cases in in uh in omaha and colleen's like i'm gonna do half capacity uh where are you in yeah really yeah secure that's the part i'm like i'm not sure of where i go I don't know. I, like, I, I want to get back on stage, but I think I'd. I think, I don't know. Like, I really need. I really hope that um, within a month they do some type of. If if it's safe to do some type of shows at like the store. Store. Be uh, that'll be a fun show to go to. It's, there's no way they're going to be able to keep it at half capacity. We'll see. Yeah, haven't we been having? Isn't it still on a downward slope here, in California? Yeah, that's what it looks. like. It is. Yeah. It is on a downward slope. Yeah. So been. so tell me, because I think I'm confused on the rules of stay at home. Yeah. For me, it is work. It's like this. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. Like, this is, I, but this is by permission, though. The city, yeah. we're following guidelines. So like, so then uh, like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm at, at a loss for the guidelines because I'll see people doing stuff online. And then like I'll what? go, like, I don't know. Like, it was really big. Everyone went and saw the um, oh, dandelions. Right, the poppy. The what? poppy fields. Everyone, a lot of people drove up to the poppy fields. And we got a text from a friend saying, hey, do you want to go see the poppy fields? I said, that's not stay at home. And he I was, think you're right. And he was like, no, you can do that. And I was like, I wouldn't let me and my girls and Leanne go. But then I saw other people going. I was like, oh, we should have just fucking gone. Because you're only in your car. Like, and, it's, and, it, and then that becomes like, that becomes kind of like public the public gets to decide it's almost like your behaviors and actions then get put out if you decide to put it on social media and whatnot for the public to decide if you're doing something wrong right mm, yeah i mean publicizing it's a different you know. okay what about like so i, I think i texted you about this because our friends were having wanted to have people over they wanted to have us over it would be eight of us total and they're like why don't you guys come for dinner and i was like because i think that's not stay at home i don't think you should have friends come over for, right no okay so. and and the girls were pissed Leanne was pissed Leanne wasn't pissed she if she sees this she'll be very angry she was Leanne was like whatever you think is right we'll do but the girls were like come on let's get out of the house let's go to someone she they're like they're like they've been quarantined we've been quarantined we're all safe and then by the way friend text back and they're like oh we have not been technically quarantined like we've definitely gone to other people's houses and i was like oh yeah i was like oh my god i would have just gone to your house and gotten the fucking covid i think i think you're, you're probably best to keep doing what you've been doing until they lift more restrict they're gonna this lift is my brain right more restrictions this is my brain i and this is how i my i operate is this right here i believe feed some sort of public service in that it, it's under the cdc guidelines people are looking for entertainment we are kind of doing like this is a job and we all kind of has made a pact like do not go out this is our one get out of jail free is like come and do this podcast stay socially distant follow cdc guidelines but then i go i gotta be in the house oh, like literally every day out of after i haven't even gone to fucking grocery stores yeah you should just keep doing what you're doing they're gonna live they're gonna california has a plan to lift bunch of restrictions in mid-may so just wait till then what percentage of this city do you think has been following cdc guidelines 20 mm, maybe 20 percent. 20 to 30 because I, I mean you look at the bus stops they're fucking packed and the freeways yeah have more than you would think it's an interesting time in history to have lived through this to see i i would never have thought this could have happened of course not. in a million fucking years that's the most like surprising thing about this whole experience is, is that it, you know we didn't ever imagine 
this would happen. Ever imagined. No, I mean, you thought that a pandemic, you know, you like you, everyone references the Spanish flu, 1980, and you're like, yeah, dude, that was before they fucking had microwaves. Like, they don't yeah. know anything. They're fucking dum dums walking. Like, you know, they didn't have medicine. Like, you just go, if anything comes, we're so advanced, someone will just, you know, press a button, and, and then you look at where we're at. It's fucking really makes you realize that we're not we're not as strong it's like no. it's like you know what this has all reminded me of is i remember being in the uh, i been grow up in the ocean in florida but i remember getting in the ocean in california and being like oh yeah it's the fucking ocean it's not a big deal and my buddy's like oh the waves are a little stronger out here i was like i got it bro i've surfed i've I know what i'm doing and i went out and i got and the waves were a lot bigger and i went and out the water's fucking and cold. the water's cold as shit <laughs> yeah. and i got pushed under <sighs> And I felt like I got a bruise from a wave. And I oh, went, yeah. oh, this is, I don't know the strength. And it started to pull me out. And I was like, I got scared. That's what this whole experience is like, being pulled out in an undertow where you're like, oh, this. I had a similar experience coming out here. What do you mean? This is the first time I was just like, oh, the ocean. Yeah. I've gone in the ocean for years. <laughs> and then you go in your ocean. First of all, you're like, holy shit. Like, it's like you jumped into an ice bath. And <laughs> yeah. then it's, yeah, the undertow, the waves, it's way stronger. It, it's a it's a totally different thing. Yeah. I mean, it, a lot of Florida beaches are like going into a bathtub. Like it's like <laughs> it's like eighty eight degree water, and it's just like moving like a lake. It's just it's, like one of these. Yeah, it's, it's totally different, man. Totally What's the different. first thing? Okay, right now they're like, okay, let's just say, let's do let's do fantasy. Right now they're like, hey, just so you know, we were wrong about the coronavirus. All you got to do is turn your cell phones off, and we're gonna be fine. We're gonna come up with a new. It's five G or whatever they're saying. And they're like, so you're good. Turn your cell phone off and you can do whatever you want. What's the first thing you do? What's the first thing you do if they pull pull the stay at home? First thing I do. Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, I actually realize that I kind of just want to be amongst, uh, as much as I always avoid crowds and everything, yeah. I want to just be like around people. I'd want to just go to like, um, you know, like a shopping area and walk walk into a restaurant, walk into a coffee shop walk into a bookstore, just like be a, like Ooh. walk around people. That's what I would, I would, I, I want to go out to dinner tonight. Yeah. Like, I would go to a first restaurant thing. I want to go out to dinner. Like I really, the, my days are fine. I was, we were telling this earlier, but my nights are a little depressing. I don't know. It's cause I'm not boozing. So I like have nothing to look forward to. Mm -hmm. but, like, I just feel like you're like, Oh great. Turn on. Okay. Yeah. And then what time is bed soon? Let's yeah. go to bed. Yeah. No, I, a restaurant. That's what I'm saying. Social environment is what I would want to be around. You know? Yeah. And then stop seeing people with their dumb fucking masks on too. Maybe just go hit somebody wearing a mask. Just go rip masks off people's faces. Yeah. Just spit in their face. Ah. Yeah. How great would that be? be? Great. Hey, do you have any extra tampons in your car? No. Oh, because Nadav needs one. His pussy's been bleeding. Really? Yeah. For real? Hey, real quick. Let's, let's no. <laughs> just to be fair about this. Yeah. Let's real quick Google real quick if you can, Nadav when men became attractive just so we give, go full circle so like go to 1940s men, uh men 1940s man oh i got it this is what you were getting at yeah look at how sharp this guy look at this guy no 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 go back not a zoot suit fucking riot guy go to the fucking guy go to the first look at these guys they all look at this guy on the right vintage man Oh yeah, he's, I mean he's got it going on. So that's the power dynamic must have been amazing back then, right? Because like they had all the jobs, all the money. And then you had those fucking basset hounds walking around in bathing suits, and then these guys had look at this on. guy. Yeah, look at fucking even mediocre men were good looking because you didn't have the there were the I bet the average over the average weight of a man. I bet everyone every man was like perfect body weight. I bet a lot more were. They're, they're definitely probably give me give me nineteen. Give me 19, uh, 1900s man. Okay, these fucking Not silly so handsome fucking... there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, Ooh. I guess we can find the date when men got attractive. Oh, Jesus. They all look like fucking dandies. Yeah, I guess they'd be attractive in Brooklyn. Real animals back then, man. Oh. Okay. Okay, give me 1920s man. Oh, this is right around World War One. This is when they started getting attractive, I think. This is when you. 
Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh. Over arms uh, the Black Sox are playing today. Um, okay. You already have hats like that. I do have a hat like that. Yeah. Okay. These outfits are fucking ridiculous. They are. So people roughly became attractive in the 40s and 50s. I think so. I think it's a safe safe bet. Good analysis. <laughs> no one was ever attractive before that. All right. We got to wrap up. Um, no one was attractive before 1950. Do you want to watch the poutine one more time before nope. we go? Let's do it. We have a read to do? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, oh, why? Because... What do you mean, why the fuck do you need one? Shut up. What? So, um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, thanks for listening. Oh, we have the, the update is this. A couple things. First of all, Wheeler Walker Jr., uh, we're both big fans. Yeah. New album, uh, new greatest hits album called Fuck You Bitch uh, is, is out. should be out right now. Um, a lot of people scooped up the, uh, the, we have new two bears, two vices shirts where we're bears and one has 10 milligrams and one has booze. That's the new two bears. I don't think I've seen that one. Uh, that's the, the is that the one that, yeah, I, that I sent I, out? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's and a great then, one. Yeah. Go to them. Those. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I the, like that. The tie dye one is limited edition. Or I like um, the tie dyed one. And then the update on the hats. I get asked about the hats every day. A lot. I get asked um, about the hats a lot. Oh, I those, love that fucking shirt. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Those are supposed to come in May, which is this month if you're watching this as it comes out. So as soon as they come out, you know what I think we should do? Because I'm ser I've seriously never been asked about something like that hat. And it is limited edition. We should do an IG live together where we in, like we put them up because they'll Let's go right it. away. We should Let's do it. it. Okay. I did one of those. I did that that uh, Zoom for with five hundred people. Yeah. How'd that go? I, I called you in. The yeah. 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 It. Yeah. It was it was fucking awesome. You know what? I not to say that there's any public service, but you know who it was really fun for? Who? A lot. There were a lot of people that are single that are just stuck in an apartment. And they were to like, talk to somebody. One guy was like, "I haven't talked to anyone in like a fuck a week." That's he was cool. like, "Thank you so much." Oh, what the fuck? And he was like, "Oh, this is amazing. like." And so that's really cool is when you see like who dudes. organized it. I did. No, but like who organ like how did, who put it together like made it work oh me you totally yeah, did this? i have a zoom you just get a an upgraded zoom account yeah and then i was, I said to my people i was like i think we can do like you can do that three thousand people i want to do it for a fundraiser we done all right i'll, I'll talk to you about it all right all right uh thank you guys for listening and watching love you i love right. you too bye guys bert and tom tom and bert one goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.